the security arrangement between uh, Saudi and Iran from 2001 has been reconstituted. Um, back in 2016, relations particularly deteriorated between the two uh, because of the Saudi execution of leading Shia cleric Sheikh Nimr in Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, in and around uh, protests by the Shia community there against discrimination uh, to them by the state. Also, things like the Syrian conflict since 2011 has also further <coughs> divided uh, Iran and Saudi from each other. They also back opposing sides in the violent conflict in Yemen as well. Interestingly, however, Saudi and Iran were on the same side during the Libya conflict in 2011 when the Islamic Republic of Iran turned their support uh, essentially for the NATO strategy to overthrow the Libyan socialist state of Marma Gaddafi as a quote-unquote Islamic awakening and they sent people there to support the NATO proxy death squads in Benghazi and also Lebanese Hezbollah were directly involved in that as well. So it's not a straightforward case that Iran always opposes Western imperialism throughout the Islamic world. But putting that to, uh, aside for a second, to understand the problematic of this in general, one of the issues here is that if one only has a geopolitical commentary and reflection on the issue without seeing what's necessary for the unity and the upliftment in a socialist direction, there is no other direction for that, for oppressed and exploited people. Basically, if you have geopolitics without a real ethic and content and principle running through it, which is revolutionary uh, liber liberatory, then you're going to fall into right-wing toxic politics that is only going to oppress people even further. The people of the region, people of Saudi and Iran, they need a non-sectarian, unifying movement that, yes, brings stability and peace, but also struggles for uh, greater returns of the wealth stolen uh, from them by the respective capitalist states and the global capitalist uh, uh, situation. Uh, and so, really, if you look at what this is doing, China is trying to posture like it's done something historical and great here. But actually, the agreements that they brokered between the two states are very tenuous. And the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is very, very close with Donald Trump and his community of the Republican Party in the USA. So whatever China broker here, with the assumption that the Republican Party or an element of that is going to return to the White House just in the next 12 months or so, this whole deal will be weaponized in the Republicans' culture ward and will be scuppered. Uh, similarly, like the developing uh, deal between the US and Iran around the nuclear, Iranian nuclear program was scuppered within six months of uh, Donald Trump ascending to the White House. So there's a, a lot of prob uh, problematics there. But to return to the central issue, if we don't understand geopolitics through the prism of an anti-colonial socialist analysis and ethics and principles, then it's going to be right-wing politics are going to be reconstituted and recycled in an increasingly toxic manner. So what is the benefits? I mean, one always will argue a calming of tensions between, between global South states. But is this going to achieve that necessarily? Mm, one really has to put a, a major question mark over that at the very least.